Hi and welcome back to Mac Music Channel here. Today we have part three of the Open Stage Control from Scratch tutorial series where we're going to look at customizing the faders. So where we left it uh, before uh, at the end of the last video was uh, looking like this. So this is pretty much it from uh, sort of the styling and layout point of view. Uh, we've got a responsive layout. We have uh, custom fader controls. Uh, we have some buttons. Uh, here we have a little bit of logic with the program uh, the display up here. And then we also have some, uh, some custom uh, knobs as well. Uh, a little bit of flicker there. I'll cover improving that um, in another video. So in order to keep this video to a reasonable length, I'm just going to focus on the faders for this video. Um, and so we've essentially got two ways of doing this. The first way would be to uh, look at the source code uh, for open stage control, which is open source. It's available on GitHub and edit that. The way that open stage control draws its fader control is by uh, write, writing into a canvas object. So if I bring up F12, which is the developer console, I go to the elements tab, I do control shift C, and I select this. What you'll see is this is a an empty canvas element that supports, and it's of, also of type drag event. Um, and what the source code does is it then based on the properties that you set in uh, uh, in here will use these properties in order to draw the appropriate fader control um, so this here is the uh, source code for open stage control which is available from github and if we uh, look in here we've got a uh, source widgets sliders fader.js um, this is the draw method inside there it does some maths and then uh, it does this dot ctx uh, so ctx is the uh, context so the way that you draw in a canvas element in html5 is you get a context and then you do uh, commands like begin path move to line to um, and stroke actually draws whatever you've just done so that's how that works so potentially what i could have done is i could have come in here and thought okay well i'll add another property to this give it let's say image path and then modify the source code to um, in, in order to um, implement this. Um, the issue I've got with that is that um, obviously editing the source code here is quite complicated um, and it would mean also that it wouldn't be these changes wouldn't be available to everybody else unless I submitted a pull request against the main repository I'm not entirely sure custom faders is sort of in line with the way that open stage control is developed and um, yeah it would mean say if there's a new version then you pull the new version or use a new version and um, you know any changes that I'd made would would be over overwritten and yeah that would be you know not the most sort of uh, transferable and sort of reusable way to do it um, so I found I think which is uh, hopefully a more um, elegant solution which is built upon the um, provided functionality within open stage control so the way that I achieved the custom styling for the fader control is uh, first of all uh, to uh, is with the combination of CSS and a little bit of JavaScript scripting um, the first thing to do is for the fader uh, widget is to set the opacity of the canvas uh, element to zero so in, in the style sheet I um, I set canvas opacity to zero so what that does is effectively it hides all of the, the canvas you can't see it it's still there 
and you can still interact with it, but you just can't see it. Um, the next thing I did um, was to, uh, I, I've given it a class, uh, which I mentioned before, which channel fader in the last video, and I was just using that to apply a green background, which I've removed. That was to help with layout. Um, the next trick, I suppose, is to make use of the HTML uh, property within the uh, within the widget, and what that does is allow you to put an arb arbitrary snippet of HTML, uh, which we can then style. So I created a div. Uh, and give it a class called fader knob. So if we go to the uh, developer console again, I bring this up. What you'll see here is there is a, um, a div class HTML, and here's my div class fader knob. So what that means is there is a, a div element uh, which we are then going to style appropriately. So uh, if we bring the class uh, style sheet back up, this is the fader knob class. Uh, and there's a number of styles I've given it. Uh, position absolute, uh, which I've covered before. Left zero, right zero means take up the full width. The height is 80. I've given it a path to a slider. Uh, so the actual image file itself, I've set background to no repeat because uh, we don't want that to repeat, which it does by default. I've set the background size to be 40 by 80. Uh, so I set the height here. Uh, the background uh, is twice as high as it is uh, wide and the reason for that is that inside here this is the um, slider O2 thumb slider O2 thumb and this is 52 by 104 so that's in a 2 to 1 ratio so we just kept the ratio there the same just reduced the size a little bit I put Z index to 1 oh sorry in background position so center it put it on top with Zendix one and set pointer events to none. Uh, this pointer events one means it basically don't handle, essentially make the image and the, or the div of class fader knob transparent to the mouse. So it doesn't interrupt the mouse at all. It's all of the mouse events, uh, like me clicking on here, get passed through to the underlying uh, widget so we don't lose any of the functionality that we that open stage control already provides uh, essentially we're sort of making that uh, invisible uh, to the uh, to the mouse so we don't lose any any uh, any of that functionality um, uh, and yeah so that's it basically for the style so we've got this um, so we've got this div we've styled it it's got it's got uh, it's got that image on it so how do we make it move so if we go back to the style, sorry, the CSS property, uh, say we've uh, just slight change from last time. I have to use colon host here uh, because I've got this inline style. I just need to make sure that um, this colon host basically targets um, this actual control for the top left. And remember from the last video, which I'll link to up above now, um, these are our fixed offsets from the uh, from the top, uh, from the left, and from the top of the control, and then dynamically, I set the top property of the uh, fader knob div to uh, be the uh, fader one val. So what this fader one val? If we go over here, this is a variable uh, of type variable. Um, nothing special here. It's literally just a placeholder and the way that I calculate that placeholder um, is in the scripting so if I come down to the scripting make this a little bit bigger what I'm doing here is I'm setting the value of fader one val to be a, um, a particular number so what I want to do is uh, let me um, bring this out into a, uh, into a text file and talk you through it. So uh, set fader one val one minus get fader. So basically, what I do, uh, the fader here has a value from zero to one two seven. So when it's down here, it's at zero. When it's up here, it's at one two seven. So uh, we need to do a little bit of mass. So basically, what we want to say is. Um, inside you can see the boundary of the fader widget here 
inside the, this boundary when the fader is at its maximum, i.e. 127, the top position, uh, the top of this image is actually at zero um, relative to uh, inside, inside this widget. And when it's at the bottom, the value is the height of the uh, control minus the height of the image. So this top is in, in line with the top of the of the uh, top of here, and that wants to be this whole distance here. Back up a bit is the height of the image. So we come here. Um, so that last bit is get prop of the fader one control height. So I get the height property and I take off 80. That's the height of the image. So what I want to do is down the bottom when this is uh, zero. So yeah, when when the value is zero, I want to make sure that um, this equals one. So this expression here is one. Um, so essentially what I'm doing is, uh, let's run those numbers. So when get fader one, that's zero. So I'm doing bracket one minus uh, zero over one, two, seven times 300 I know it's 319 minus 80. So that 319 comes from the geometry here. The height is 319. So that distance is 319. The height of the image is 80. So I'm doing the value, uh, well, we say 1 minus get fader 1 is 0. So 1 minus 0 is 1. So I'm doing 1 times uh, 239 which is obviously equal to 239. So that means the top offset of this uh, div image is 239. And if we go in here, we look at class fader knob, and we look at the uh, top value here, that's uh, set to 239 picks. Um, so that's that bit. And then just run the other, uh, the other value, which is 127. So let's just run that through the calculator as well. So what we're doing is we're saying it's one, we're doing sorry, bracket we're doing one minus uh, 127 over 127 uh, times, uh, what was it, 239. So 127 over 127 is one, one minus one is zero. So we're doing zero times uh, 239, which equals to zero. And sure enough, that's exactly what we want. We want this image to be right at the top of the inside of the fader. And that's it. Um, it's as simple as that. So when we when we move the fader, the script control is updating the value with setting fader one val. And in our class uh, for this, what we're saying in the CSS is this div class set the fader knob top position to be the v the value of that um, of that variable. And that's it. That's how we've done our custom fader. So yeah, hopefully you'll agree that's it's pretty simple um it took a little while to get here to be honest i went did follow a few different avenues i think it um fits well within the framework we're not writing any custom code we're not doing anything crazy we're just using the existing tools we've got in order to to make it work in order to make this work with um a door i'm going to show you how to do this with ableton and i'm going to map the channel one fader or channel three fader here um to channel one in the control uh, so the way that we do that is um, in MIDI, we just want to make sure that we are receiving from OSC. So OSC is the uh, loop port, is the sorry, the loop MIDI device, which I've covered before, which is here. Um, and we make sure we check monitor, which is in. And uh, we're going to be definitely listening for MIDI controls coming from our uh, control surface uh, so what we need to do is we need to make sure that we're sending some commands so if we um, so let's go back to our template let's go to editor let's go to OSC and um, so we're going to use MIDI um, rather than actually OSC itself uh, the address is slash control this means MIDI CC pre-args so on channel 10 uh, we're going to uh, 
choose the uh, control ID of 88 and then the value is going to be the value of, of this, this fader. Uh, the target is MIDI OSC. Essentially what that means is whenever we move this, uh, this is going to be sending uh, MIDI CC messages um, on channel 10 at uh, with controller value of 88. So back in Ableton, uh, if I do control M into MIDI map mode, I uh, select this channel fader. I go to uh, here, I just wiggle this a little bit. You'll notice in the background here that this is now updated and um, and it's note control. So you can see it's CC, it's channel 10 and the control or, or, or note is 88. Uh, that'll do, so if I just escape and go out of that, uh, bring this back here and let's get this set up nicely so we can see what's going on. I'll just get that lined up there. Uh, so what you'll see is that when I drag the fader here, uh, the fader here moves. Um, and when I drag the fader here, uh, the fader in Ableton moves. Now this is uh, obviously a pretty straightforward stuff. Um, obviously your mileage is going to vary w with different doors. Um, Ableton does have the ability uh, to use pre-configured uh, pre uh, control services. And in the uh, preferences, uh, when you go to uh, Link MIDI and you've got the control surface, uh, there is the BCF2000 here. When I select this, um, there's some crazy stuff going on here, which I'm not too sure. And I think this is probably because Ableton is expecting um, uh, the a real BCF to be available and to be responding to, um, uh, I think it's Mackie. Uh, HUI human user interface or, or, or Mackie control service which I'm not implementing so I think things are going a bit crazy I will work that out and I'll get back to you and and do that but in the meantime if you want to uh, you know map a control uh, to your fader you just click the fader uh, give that a little wiggle um, uh, channel 2 I've set it to channel uh, so fader 2 channel 10 uh, I've set it to control 80, 89. Um, that's been picked up here. Escape to go out of that mode. And just bring that uh, around together. And if I just make that sure that's that side, you'll see um, that channel two moves. Oh, channel one moves. And the same here. Channel two moves. Channel one moves. Right, so that pretty much wraps it up for this video. Um, uh, next video I'll be looking at uh, the buttons and the uh, custom knobs and, and anything else that uh, I think needs further explanation. I hope you've enjoyed this and if you've got any questions then please do uh, leave me a comment down below. If you like the, this video, if you like this content then please do hit the like button and if you want to see more of this then obviously please do hit that subscribe button and uh, click the bell to get notified when the next part in this series and any future content related to open stage control gets uploaded. Uh, thanks for watching, catch you next time. Cheers, bye.